The Nasuverse is no stranger to tragic figures and dark events. In fact, I just spent two whole videos discussing some of Kinoko Nasu's darker, more gritty worlds in the stories of Kara no Kyokai and Tsukihime. Those two tales tell grim and sorrowful stories that are filled with suffering, both in the main cast and in the world at large. But while I painted those as largely darker interpretations of the Fate world, I think that Fate itself harbors a shocking degree of tragedy in certain cases. And I think that that tragedy can be just as poignant as the bleak worlds seen in the previously discussed works. Of all the Fate storylines and spinoffs, I think none get as close to the dreadful tone of those two stories as Fate Zero. Zero takes the Grail War concept and really pushes everything to its absolute limit. It feels like all of the characters and their flaws were pushed to their logical conclusions and criticized in this work. And no character faced such painful critique as Artoria Pendragon, perhaps better known as Saber. While there is no shortage of tragic characters in Zero, Saber represents a special point of interest as she has become the poster girl of the Fate Stay Night franchise. And yet, she is given no special privilege in this story. She faces hardship after hardship, and is given no slack, rest, or reward in the end. Her arc in this story pushes her to her absolute limits and takes every opportunity to challenge both her perception of herself and the audience's perception of her as a character. All of this culminates into a sorrowful and meaningful arc that forever changes the Honorable Knight and perhaps even the audience. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here. For starters, we need to look at exactly what happens in Zero to understand her story arc. Needless to say, massive spoilers for all of Fate Zero. And if you're one of those people who thinks that watching Fate Zero before Stay Night ruins the whole show, then I guess spoilers for Stay Night too? But anyways. Right out of the gate, Fate Zero wants the audience to know that this is a different kind of story. It sets itself up to be a more mature and disastrous take on a Grail War when compared to the events of the Fifth Grail War. Now it does this in a few ways. First, it shows us some truly harrowing material. This show pulls zero punches, pun intended, and is sure to display each and every little point of suffering that our main cast goes through. But more than that, it's careful to show us exactly who it is happening to. Fate Zero brings back Saber from Stay Night to give the audience something familiar to latch onto. Saber represents a point of comfort in the Fate world because she is a static fixture of the narrative. No matter what kind of Fate Stay Night material you're consuming, it's likely that Saber or someone who looks a whole lot like Saber will be there. But beyond the first few episodes, her role as a tether for returning fans begins to shift into something a bit more complex. The show begins to test the heroic king by jabbing metaphorical knives in between the armor that guards her innermost personal insecurities. This is on full display in her duel with Lancer. Early on in the show, the two form a bond of respect between knights. They decide to hold a fair one-on-one -on -one duel bound by their honor. This immediately plays into the perception of Saber that she and the audience share, one dictated by extreme chivalry and unbreakable honor. But that honor begins to seem slightly less impervious when the duel is cut short. The two decide to resolve their conflict at another time, but not before Lancer permanently injures Saber's hand. This injury will be important later, so keep it in the back of your mind. While this duel mostly serves to play up the knight's respective codes of honor, something very important happens that would be unlikely in their original time periods. The very fact that this duel is cut short cues the audience in on the idea that Saber is not in control here. Kiritsugu has final say over all events and all actions that Saber takes part in, and much like the cut on her hand that won't heal, that too is going to become very important later. Now, over the course of the show, Kiritsugu becomes Saber's biggest moral obstacle, as he is the embodiment of the sentiment, the ends justify the means. And this is no exaggeration. Kiritsugu has a rock-solid personal code of conduct and morality that is more than willing to operate in a gray zone. And it just so happens that he was paired up with perhaps one of the most virtuous servants available to masters in this war. We see him blow up buildings, fight from the shadows, and employ all manner of underhanded strategy to get a leg up on his opponents. This puts Saber in a tough spot and forces her to choose between her own conflicting morals. She's sworn fealty to Kuritsugu for the duration of the Grail War, and yet her own conscience is set on fire by everything he does in the pursuit of victory. This immediately puts a rift between the two, but more importantly, it puts a rift between Saber and herself. 
Throughout the show, she is constantly fighting in not only a Holy Grail war, but also in an inner battle of right and wrong. She knows what Kiritsugu is doing is wrong, and yet she feels trapped in her allegiance to him as her master. All of this inner conflict comes to a furious roaring boil in episode 16, The End of Honor, where Saber finally gets her chance to finish her honorable duel with Lancer. This duel in the moment is perhaps more important than the Holy Grail itself to Saber, as it is one of her few chances to salvage what little honor she feels she still has and engage in a fair and respectable duel between knights. Things start off quite well, with Saber omitting the use of one of her hands in an attempt to fight accurately to the injury that he caused her in their first encounter. After all, were it not for extraordinary circumstances that take place over the course of the show, she would still be suffering from that wound. So to her, it's only fair to exclude its use. Now, as the title would imply, this restoration of honor is cut short when Kiritsugu makes Kaneth use a command seal to force Lancer to kill himself. Once again, through dishonorable and deplorable methods, Kiritsugu has dashed any chance of salvation that Saber once had in the pursuit of his own victory. This one scene just about destroys Saber, and to make matters worse, as Lancer pierces his own heart, he uses his dying breath to curse Kiritsugu, the Grail War, and most devastating of all, Saber. At this point, all honor is lost. Her chance of redemption through combat is dead with Lancer, and all that remains for her is to obtain the Grail and wish for her salvation through its magic. But to get there, a few more things stand in her way. After Lancer, there's another character who enters early on to test Saber's mettle as a knight. Berserker is everything that the King of Knights despises in a fighter. He is loud, brash, rude, and holds no respect for his fellow combatants. Frankly, everything that Berserker stands for flies directly in the face of what a knight should be, especially one as honorable as Saber or one of her knights of the round table. She openly berates his brutish approach to combat and views him as something akin to a wild beast rather than an honor-bound combatant. Suffice it to say, his existence and behavior reflect poorly on both himself as a knight and whichever lord he swears fealty to. Seeing such a vile depiction of a knight is uncomfortable to her at first, but in the final episodes, things become much more deeply unsettling. It becomes clear that Berserker knows Saber's name, and seems to have a personal grudge against her in particular. At first, she's confused by this, but once his helmet comes off, it's revealed that Berserker is a corrupted version of Lancelot, one of the knights of the Round Table that served directly under Saber when she was king. This fact absolutely, yet again, destroys Saber. She sees every single one of her failures as king personified in Lancelot. Of course, what's truly tragic about this is that his condition is not even Saber's fault. The incantation put on Berserker by Zulk and Mato drove him to madness, not Saber's actions as king. Of course, Saber has no way to know this, and as such, this character serves to be yet another nail brutishly pounded into the coffin that holds her self-respect and honor as king. Once again, this blow to her psyche makes her question her worth as a king and ships away at her facade of perfection. But at this point in the story, she still has that last bastion of hope, the Holy Grail. Hot off the dishonorable deaths of both Lancer and Berserker, Saber is left with one goal, obtain the grail, and change her past. She wants to rewrite history so that she never becomes king in the hopes that Britain will be better off without her. Just as she is about to do so, when victory is in her grasp, Kiritsugu once again kills any semblance of hope that she could have had by ordering her to destroy the grail and with it her only shot at redemption. This is the last straw. From here, she is without hope, left to return to the throne of heroes with no conclusion to her actions and no closure. Everything in Fate Zero that happens to Saber is designed to break her down to the cell and rebuild her in a much less generous light. I think this story is perhaps Saber's best appearance, because it really shows us all sides of her personality and goes the extra mile to deconstruct the concepts that she is defined by, mainly her knightly tendencies. This also works as perfect setup and room for growth in Fate Stay Night, which happens directly after Zero. In Fate Stay Night, Saber once again seeks the Grail for the same reason as in Zero. But I must say, without the context that Zero provides, her goal is a bit less believable. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that her characterization is bad in Fate Stay Night or anything like that. I just mean that we were told she is the ultimate Saber class servant and the King of Knights. All backstory we get on Saber in Stay Night makes her out to be the ideal king, and yet she insists otherwise. At face value, this seems like an easy way to give the character some depth through self-doubt, but once we have the context from Zero, 
This becomes not just a plot device, but a consequence of her actions and circumstances. All of the wretched events of Zero serve to craft an interesting and deep character by asking both Saber and the audience to question everything about her. This allows for our preconceptions and ideas about her to be challenged, thus creating a more accurate and complete picture of her. By the end of Fate Zero, Saber is no longer just a servant, but instead, a person. And I think that is what makes her arc in Zero so damn good. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you made it this far, then you probably liked what I had to say. If that's the case, be sure to leave me a like so I know I'm doing something right. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an upload, and I also have a Twitter and an Instagram if that's something that interests you. Links to those will be below. But with all that YouTube stuff out of the way, I just want to say thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.